Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 35, and we are going to discuss integration by parts rule 2. I'd like to draw your, your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So the videos which are relevant to this one are, first of all, number 33, where I discuss the proof of integration by parts, and I call that rule 1. Video number 31, where I discussed Green's theorem, and video number 17, where I proved product rule number 2. So basically, we're just going to apply all of these, and um, we're going to move on from there. So in the last video, what we showed you, or we'll say in the video on the proof of integration by parts, we showed you that if we integrate a function, the product of two functions, we'll say from A to B. So the two functions are, first of all, f, and then in actual fact, the derivative of another function, I'm going to call that g, or dg dx, and we integrate that dx. Well, what actually we can do is, we can transfer the derivative to the other function, so it becomes df dx and we so we're after transferring the derivative okay but what it cost us was a minus sign and it also costs costs us a boundary term like that all right so what we'd like to do is do something like similar to that on the product rule number two so as I defined it product rule number two is the following what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, we're going to take the divergence of a scalar function f multiplied by a vector field a Okay, and when I proved that, I showed you that it was the scalar function f multiplied by the divergence of a. And then what we had to do is we had to add to that the product, of the dot product, we'll say, of the vector field a multiplied by the gradient of the scalar field f. Okay, so where do we go from here? Well, what we do is we need to integrate. Uh, we need to integrate everything, but we also need to note what Green's theorem says, or the divergence theorem, and the divergence theorem. Green's theorem will say says the following. It says that if you integrate over a volume, the divergence of a function, let's say a, and it's, it's over a volume, so I'm going to call that d tau, is the same as going to a closed surface integral of the vector field a dot dA, which is the uh, infinitesimal area element. And that's the Green's Green's theorem or the divergence theorem. So what we're going to do here, here is integrate our product rule number two over a volume. So we're going to have the divergence of the field, uh, the divergence of the field, which is f times a, like that. Okay. And we're going to integrate that, of course, d tau, because we said we're doing it over the volume. And that's going to be equal to the integral over the volume of f outside of the divergence of a, d tau, plus the integral of a multiplied by the gradient of f d tau. And that's, they're all over a volume. But the point here is that this, if we look at it, and we apply the divergence theorem, we can rewrite, we'll say this over here, as the closed surface integral of the scalar function a, excuse me, the scalar function f multiplied by the vector field a integrated dot d, d a, where small a in this case represents the infinitesimal area element. So we can rearrange this and get our integration by parts. We're going to call this, if we ever apply this, we're going to call it integration by parts. So we integrate over the volume of the scalar function f multiplied by the gradient of a vector field a integrated d tau is the same thing as having this closed surface integral of the scalar function a multiplied by the vector field capital A dot dA, which is the infinitesimal area element, but we need to take away from that the integral over the volume of A, the capital the vector, a vector A, with dot product it with the uh, with the gradient of f, and that's going to be equal to uh, over d tau. So you can you can think about it um, you can think about it I suppose in the same way. So up here, what we what we did was we transferred the derivative, and we got we got a minus sign and a boundary term. So here we, we did we transferred the derivative as well. We transferred the we'll say the Nabla operator onto f and we got the gradient. We got a minus sign and we got a boundary term. Alright, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also watch or excuse me, click on universityphysicstutorials.com.